you are not playing tricks. Playing tricks in Sahaja Yoga is very, very dangerous. You are not playing tricks with your marriages. You are not trying to involve somebody else, thinking that mother will forgive you and all that. I will forgive, but your ascent is different. So don't try to play tricks with anything that you have been doing before, but change yourself completely, transform yourself completely. Now you change your attitude towards life, you can, because it is changed already. If you try to be the other person, you cannot. Now you have become a flower, now you can't become suddenly the leaf. Now you are a flower and you have to live like a flower. And that's what you have to remember that compassion is such an outflow, it's such a natural thing for a surgeon. It's not natural for anybody else. Other people who talk of compassion or this and that are actually are not at all compassionate. They are doing it for money, they are doing it for position, they are doing it for ego satisfaction. But you are ha having compassion because you have to have it, you are living. It is flowing, the compassion, because it has to flow. And you are doing compassion because of compassion. There is no other purpose behind it. Only this will give you something that is of permanent nature, of a sthayi nature. I have seen people, as I was telling in the morning, who have gone to an organization, made a beautiful organization out of it, and once they leave, the organization is finished because they do not give anything substantial to that organization. And what is to be given is a large heart of compassion. If you do not give that, once you go away from that, the rest of them are again barren. It's not growth. Like if you bring water and plant things and give water to that area, then it becomes very uh, beautiful and you can say it's a very uh, lush, lush growth. But as soon as that water source is removed, it gets again dried up. But Sahaja Yoga is different. In Sahaja Yoga, you not only grow as a plant, but also as the source of the plant. If this plant is removed from here, put somewhere, it will give water to other plants. Do you know this new dimension that you have within yourself? that once this plant is uprooted from here and taken out, it will not die, not at all, it will grow, but it will make others grow. This is another type of a growth that we have. And it's a very different position we are in, and that's what now I want, that all of you, even if you are uprooted and put into any other place, I've seen when I ask people that you better shift from here to there, they just get frightened. You better go there and do this, they get frightened. You are a plant which can not only go and prosper in any place, but you will give the necessary nourishment to other plants. That's what you are. So do not stick on to one place. If you stick on, then think there must be something wrong with the place. Like a glue, if you are sticking to one place, it's very dangerous. And be sure that you must turn away from such a place which glues you. That doesn't mean that as people are here, they never stay in the house, all the time running out. It doesn't mean. Again, I have to strike that point. Because otherwise the people are here, are all the time running away from their houses. That's not the point. The point is that you should not be glued to anything and not afraid of leaving any place because now you are Sahaja Yogis. You have joined the ocean and ocean can take you anywhere. So just prepare yourself to move into any place because you have to take this compassion everywhere and to prosper the Kingdom of God, you have to serve Him. And this service is only possible if you know that you are here for a very great universal task, not only for England, for India or for uh, America, but you are here for a global task which is the epitome of our evolution, this is the 
highest thing we have to do for our creation and for our creator. And you are chosen for that. So don't divert your attention to anything that is not fulfilling your own manifestation. Discard all that. Don't waste your energy. And your manifestation is your compassion, your love. But still it should not remain rational. Whatever I have said to you is just to put you into a condition where you start sucking the vibrations as well as giving the vibrations. It is an action, which is a happening that should take place within you. It's not rationality, it's not thinking about it. Only by saying these things I really stun your thinking. You should allow this to happen to you just with the vibratory awareness, you should judge yourself, am I the one who is giving vibrations to others? Am I the one who has stored these vibrations, or am I getting ruined? All this will give you a great meaning, and an employment, as I said, employed by God. If you have any questions, ask me. You see, if you get angry within yourself and if you are sure that you are not doing anything wrong, for a Sahaja Yogi there is no need to say outside your anger, there is no need. That anger itself is a power and you should do your bandhan and anything that you want to do. But you should not show that you are angry. You should be absolutely silent, because you can be, you are in the axis, you are not on the periphery. Actually the anger is just to see your anger and use that anger for that purpose. And once you start doing that, that anger will itself work out. That anger will itself work out the person. And you will be amazed how it, but you must learn to see your anger that is working. All these things are important. You have seen that sometimes only shouting at the boots, they go away. And many mad people have been cured like that. But you don't do all that, that's for me. You must be always decent with decorum and all that. But if the anger is because of your nature or a tendency or out of control, then it's a bad thing. If it is an out of control, then it's a bad thing. If you get into a temper because it is out of control, then it's a bad thing. I can get very angry, but I am completely under control, I know why I am angry, where the boot is, how he is running away, I can see. <laughs> but you can't see the boot, you can't see anything. So there is no need for you to get angry, show temper. But if you have an anger, say for example, which makes you uncontrollable, then there is a mantra for that, Shanti. Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Shanti Rupena Sarva. You must ask for that bliss, for that peace. This is a mantra for you. For controlling your temper, you have to tell yourself, Ya Devi Sarvabhuteshu Shanti Rupena Sosita. So Shanti is the point, the access point is that. Where, from where you witness everything, you are in Shanti, you are in complete, you are not in a turmoil, even if you are angry. You are not in a turmoil. Whatever is angry is the power, and the power is taking charge. But unless and until that is achieved, what you have to do is to put yourself in a position that you are peaceful. So I think that's a very good mantra, is to say, Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Shanti Rupena Saustita. Can you say that? Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Shanti Rupena Saustita Namaste Se, Namaste Se, Namaste Se, so the Shanti is your fort, but peacefulness never means cowardice, 
never call cowardice as peace. A person who is peaceful is never covered because nothing can transgress it. Nothing can overpower it. It is never, never possible that cowardice and peace can go together. But your power is inside, not outside. So you don't show your power of your anger outside. But just a little anger with anybody, you will see it will work out. But first establish that, that position within you where you are the excess, where you do not allow anchor to sit on your head. That is the growth, that is the growth, that you are at peace. Also, another question. Alright, satisfied now? Both ways you should know. That one is the anger that is detached is perfectly alright. Anger which involves you, work it out. So judge yourself as to what it is. Good question. Hmm. Now some questions. When such intellectuals were sitting here, ask me some questions. What is Huh? What are my plans? I don't plan. You see, I don't plan because I don't know how far uh, my instruments are ready. You see, first now my only plans, if I have any, is to really prepare my weapons all right. Once they are done, then we'll fix them up. You see, unless and until you know how far your bomb can fall, how can you plan it? So first of all, I must measure up the power of my children, how powerful they are. That's what I'm trying to do now, is to make them aware of their powers, to use. Like you see Hanumana, when he was born and when he grew up, he forgot that time and he forgot his powers. So he was to be reminded that you are such and such powerful person. You don't know what your powers are. You, you ate of the whole of Surya. This you did in your childhood, you are born with this power, but now after growing you are rather be sort of uh, forgotten it and also you are you were afraid of using them and it's uh, sort of looks like in a domi uh, dominant position. But it is there. If you just try to remember them, it will come. They have tremendous power, these people have tremendous power, but they have to assume and stand on that. If they do not do it, you see, if I tell them now, go to this house, oh mother, there may be a bhut there sitting. <laughs> a person comes possessed in the ashram, they all shut their doors, oh God, this bhut has come. Or something, then what? Hmm? Can we deal with uh, there is one problem in one of your problems inside river? It's uh, those who are devoted to you at the expense of others. Those who are devoted to me? Those who use, uh, they feel that they are devoted to you, but uh, sometimes oppress others. They are what? Sometimes, so sometimes people use their devotion to you. Uh, at, the, at, the, at the expense of others, you know, um, then again, the same thing, Jamel, is the same thing is, you see, it is, you have to do it, all those who are doing that way. I'm just pointing out to all those. If you are using, uh, say, your uh, devotion to me for the oppressing of others, all right? So it is for you to see. There is nobody who can be oppressed, because your spirit cannot be oppressed. Say there is X and Y. Now Y is a person who is trying to oppress X, all right? What will he oppress? He can't oppress his spirit, can he? First point, clear. Now, this fellow, if he has to have attachment to me, nobody can stop him. That is all, you all have direct relationship, not through anyone. If you want to accept somebody's 
uh, agency, then I can't help. But otherwise, you all have a direct access to me. You all can grow your spirits. Nobody can dominate. Everyone has complete freedom to grow their spirit, to know their spirit, I mean to say. And the spirit is something cannot be dominated by. Now, supposing tries, somebody tries to oppress, what will they oppress you in which way? They'll say, all right, we'll not have this carpet, we'll have that carpet, or have it. Somebody will say, I'll jump in the sea, jump, just now you jump. <laughs> what will they oppress you in? You see, just see that, not in your spiritual world, can they? And that's how the problem starts. You see, in material things, say in an ashram now, Somebody says, all right, we would like to have a photograph of Mother put there. The other will say, no, we are going to have it there. Whether you put it here or there, makes no difference, my photograph is going to work. Even in puja matters I have seen, people will say that, no, Mother is sitting there, don't put your feet towards the Mother. It's a common thing everybody knows, should not put it. But still they will say, no, we want to put it. All right, let them put it. Next time they will not, because they will know it is wrong. They will find out. So, you see, nobody can oppress anyone. I am here to correct. Once you understand that you are not perfect, the other is not perfect. We are all perfecting ourselves, we are all coming up. Mother is there to look after us. Then we will never think like that. Now, I have also seen people will say that there are two Sahajogis talking to others, Sahajogis. Now one is a very oppressive one, the another one is upset to see that this one is oppressive. Now for that purpose, if you are quiet, silent, you will always dominate. People will listen to you, not to you. But even if you start saying, oh, you don't say like that, and this, they will think these are fighting cops. Then at that time your wiser, this thing, will even give him a chance to understand. So what happens, one person dominates, another tries to dominate them by outward things, and the whole show is over. There is no need to dominate another person by outward things, he will settle down by himself, if you show your dignity of your silence and of your understanding of Sahaja Yoga. There is no need just now to say, you shut up, you sit down, you don't do it. It's absolutely wrong. <laughs> they do it, I have seen. In my presence, I have seen. Because we still live halfway there and halfway here. The way we solve the problem, say, you have to do some business. There are two people doing the business. One person says something, another says, why did you say like this? You shouldn't say. This person says to that person, uh, you shouldn't correct. Like that, the fight is on. But that doesn't help anyway. They are also. But in Sahaja Yoga, it will never help. The another person can only be over by his dignity, by his quiet methods, by approaching a person properly. That's how the leaders will come up. They won't come up by shooting another person down, not at all by any chance. That's not possible. It's not good leadership. Good leadership is just the way you handle the situation, not the way you fight another man down. So many times I have seen, I just keep quiet, it works out. Not necessary that you should at that moment shout. There's no need. And it creates a very bad impression and very bad leadership. First of all, you cannot be dominated. This is one fact. Is a problem. You can grow in your spirituality, whatever people may try to dominate in the worldly things. Thank God we don't have any organization. Thank God we don't have secretaries, assistant secretaries, under secretaries, vice secretaries, upper secretaries, lower secretaries, we don't have any answer. Otherwise even that would have been dominating. Then they will, would have fought, fought that, so we don't have that problem. We don't have any money problem, because we don't have all these nonsensical ideas. I have solved these problems by having no institutions, no positions. Everybody has positions. But the greatest position is of your spirit, which you establish. The attention is not there, it's more ego-oriented. The whole stuff is ego-oriented. You can't fight ego with ego, you cannot. You can only fight ego or super-ego with spirit. 
how much do I dominate? I absorb all your aggression also. And how much do I dominate? If I have to correct you, I go forward and do it and tell you that I am correcting you, whether you like it or not. And you see the result, it's all right. But if you have that capacity, do it. Then there is lacking in you that you cannot do that way. So be prepared not to at least spoil the show of surgery. One person is talking too much, all right, the others will say he is good for nothing, but another one is sensible. But if you both are fighting, I don't. That doesn't show any wisdom or growth, is it? Does it? Those who think that by dominating in small, small things you are going to achieve anything are wrong. Actually, I've seen my grandchildren are real assholes. They're not bothered about these things. They don't do this. This kind of a fight they don't have. That uh, where to keep these, what to do this, they don't have. Nothing. At the most, they might fight for a chocolate or something at the most. But in spiritual matters, they never fight. In spiritual matters, they never fight. That's the place one should not fight. One should not argue. That's the point not to be argued, because truth is point. What is there to argue? You have seen all these saints, you see, those who have talked about me. What do they say? Everybody says the same thing about it. There cannot be any fight between saints, can there be? If the truth is one, how can there be fight? But because one is inadequate, another is dominating. Both must achieve that state. But the best is to be have more dignified, more grown up, more patronizing. People will definitely take to you because you will become the leader. Arguments are not going to leave you anywhere, I can tell you this. No use arguing among yourself. If you have to argue, you have to argue with others, not among yourself. Otherwise, no? What else? Hmm. What is the thing? Any other question? How do we fight the ego? See, you should never fight it. If you try to fight it, you will sit more on you. That's not the way to fight, that there is ego and you fight your ego, oh yeah, I'm going to box you, then it will grow more, you see. The more you box it, the more it will grow. Never fight your ego. <coughs> Only way is to see it. Your attention is very important. Your attention is now enlightened. Whatever you see, it comes to its right side. It comes to its right side. Side. Say ego, if it is overgrown, you just watch your ego. Best is to watch yourself in the mirror and you say, Oh, Mr. Ego, how do you do? <laughs> then it will come. Down. But don't fight it. Just to be safe. All kinds of egos could be there. If you are over educated, you are egoistical. If you are uneducated, you are egoistical because you must try to show that you are something. All sorts of egos are there. So best thing is to see for yourself. That's why I say face yourself. Yourself is your spirit. Okay. 
Just was the same for the super ego. Yes, very much so. For super ego also, not to be frightened, you should just say, get out. I can see you very clearly, you are there. Get out from here. How dare you frighten me? I am the spirit. I am the spirit. How dare you can do that? That's all. You see, ego makes you idiotic. Absolutely. Ego makes you idiotic. Makes an idiot out of you. Absolutely. And the super ego makes you a coward. It makes you a coward. Now, how to fight it? I'm not going to be an idiot if you say that. Ego will go away. If you want to be an idiot, then he'll be there to help you. If you want to be an idiot, all right, call Mr. Ego. He'll become an idiot. Straightforward. <laughs> The easiest way, easiest way, if you want to become an idiot, e simple thing is to call the ego. You come, Mr. Ego, and settle down in me, and immediately, this is a very simple composition. And super ego, if you are a coward, then it sits on your head. Say, I am not going to be hamksham, as I told you, the mantra on the army. Either you have to say, I am, another I say, I forgive you. All right, you do one thing just now. You put your left hand towards me and right hand outside. She has the hamsa here, that up. There, you see the hamsa. Tell her to come down. Coming, coming. Let's see. Sorry. Put the hamsa. And you see it clearly. Hello. Are they at Chawa? How? When you're waiting for you. Hmm. Come forward, you can come forward a little bit. Lots of people are there. Oh, you can come here. It's a time. Let's go. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yes. As I have told you, that relationship with yourself should be tyrannical. You should lash it down. You should absolutely make it clear to yourself that I have to perfect myself if I have to give this my being to God. Secondly, if you have to have relationship with others, it has to be ideal relationship. Sahajogi with Sahajogi means something great. The greatest relationship is that. With your sister, with your brother, it should be ideal. And in collectivity, we have to be pragmatic. In collectivity, we can change our course, we'll take the way we like, the way it moves, we'll manage it. But otherwise, you see, for example, take a plane. It has the same thing. Plane, when it is in the air, it can go wherever it likes. But the screws that are fixed in a plane are ideally fixed. They cannot just uh, start like a pilot seat doesn't go to the back and the back doesn't come to the front. See, the relationship is maintained. All right? And the screws which are made or anything that is made is perfect. But the aeroplane is not fixed. Aeroplane can go southward, northward, anywhere it wants. Only the things that are in it are correlated with each other in such proportion that they cannot budge from their ideal positions. I am giving this example because you are here. You will understand it better. And, the, and these things that you have produced are themselves are perfect. If they are imperfect, there will be a problem. It's like that. If you understand, this very simple thing about relations and attitudes, 
you will never have problem. Your relationship with the Sahaja Yogi has to be absolutely ideal relationship, otherwise some screw is loose. Try to make it ideal, say there's one person, you find the person is too egoistical or something, try to see what's wrong with you, first, first of all. Am I perfect? Am I alright? Or am I equally dominating? Am I equally egoistical? All right. If I am, then I better correct myself. But if I am not, if I am a good person, that way I am not dominating, then I should try to bring down his ego by making sweet things to him, making nice dis relationships with him. Try to be kind to him so that his ego comes down. Manage somehow or other to establish ideal relationship. It's absolutely simple. I mean, I don't understand what I have to tell in this thing, you know everything, that it has to be proper. Now see, the relationship between that and me has to be proper so that it doesn't burn me, isn't it? It's absolutely in lifetime also we have to do the same. That relationship with each other has to be ideal to create the best results. It is so practical, I don't know what is there to tell it. And you have to be perfect because you are the unit. And the whole thing can be pragmatic, then only it can be. But here just the other way now. The screws are pragmatic, the relationship is imperfect, and the collectivity is absolutely static. It doesn't move. The collectivity, after all, we are collective, bound to each other. How can we move, Mother? We are static now. We are bound to each other, we can't move, you see. Just like Rock of Gibraltar. Now, you being an aeronautic engineer, you should understand this better than anybody else, this example. <laughs> What else is the question? How are you? All right? I'm asking. What other question? Could you say something about maintaining our attention so that it stays where it should and doesn't get diverted into trivial things? Rustam has asked a very practical question, it's true that to keep the attention where it should be. You see, for everything you have to do some exercise, abhyas, not before realization, after realization. The best way is to learn how to watch yourself. 